the church is getting from behind God is going to give you. He equip you with the tools to get the job. When God ready for you, nobody can step ahead of you. The Lord bless you, family. God bless you. Hi to those of you in virtual land. Welcome again to another broadcast. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for uh, always being there, for supporting uh, this ministry. Praise God. I, I so much crave your prayers, especially in a time like this. There, there is suffering on every side. Amen. Uncertainties that people are dealing with. And so I just want to lift you up before the Almighty God. Ask him to preserve your strength, to give you grace to withstand in such a time as this. Father, I just thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. You promise to keep the hearts and the minds of your people. Father God, I decree and declare that nothing shall by any means terrorize them. They shall not be frightened of evil tidings. I decree that the God who is able to keep them from falling will preserve them. God, strengthen your people. And Father, as we enter into your word, Father, I thank you that the hearts of your people is prepared. Those who, are, who will be watching tonight that are not saved at the end of this service, we thank you that they will turn their lives over to Jesus Christ. Father, bless you in Jesus' name. Again, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you didn't have a chance to uh, uh, watch uh, today's service, we broadcast live from church. It was fun. It was a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord with God's people. I'm going to ask you to please uh, tune in to the broadcast. That's this morning. This morning's service, Amen. God answers was the the, the topic. God answers and uh, uh, talking about the reverse order. God is blessing His people in the reverse order. Pick up from this morning because I said I will do another segment of that same service uh, under the same topic, the reverse order. But I'm going to use for a subtopic, I'm a fighter, unbroken. The reverse order, I'm a fighter, unbroken. Second Kings uh, 4 and verse 1. Second Kings 4 verse 1. Bible declares thus, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you. Know that your servant fear the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slave, to be his slaves. Praise God. I have come to this evening to address God's prize fighters. You are God's prize fighters. Those of you that are uh, tuning in, those of you that are watching and will be watching in time to come. I like this with a woman, like this with a woman, something or someone, hallelujah, uh, has departed or died from your life. Something departed from your life that means a lot to you. Oh God, but God told me to tell you, he is not done with you. Things might die for you, but you are still here. That means God is not I like to use the word done. I could say finish or through. But, but in my spirit, I feel God is not done with you yet. You are still here. Why? Because you are a fighter. You are a fighter. Others, others expired, but you are still here. Others succumbed, 
but you are still here. Others drop out of the race, but you are still here. Others throw in the towel, but you are still here, meaning that you are a fighter. You are still a fighter. Praise God. The woman's husband died. Hallelujah. But now she picked up the baton and she said, now it's my time to fight. Praise God. She, she's a fighter. She was not going to allow what took her husband out to take her out. And I decree the same for you. Hallelujah. What take out your mother, your father, your great grandmother, whoever that may be, shall not take you out. Praise God Almighty. What some people succumb to fear uh, or, or, or trepidation, you shall not uh, succumb to that same, to, to, to that fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind that spirit that is trying to come upon you. Hallelujah. To take you out, just like it have taken out other people in your bloodline. By the grace of Almighty God, you shall stand. Why? Declare, I'm a fighter. Declare, I'm a fighter. Amen. Declare, I'm a fighter. Yes, sir. You have been through a lot. You have suffered a lot. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. The pressure, the strain, and the stress has taken its toll on you. It shows in your countenance. It shows in your face like David. When David said in Psalms 42, Why are you cast down, O my soul? It, it, it means that his face began to show the strain, the stress, the pressure that he was under. But David was a fighter. And David spoke to himself and said, Come on, hope thou in God. Hallelujah. For, for, for I shall yet praise him for the health of his countenance. Meaning that smile is coming back to you laughter is coming back to you you shall laugh again you shall smile again no matter what you're going through no matter what you're facing this hour you will laugh again in the name of jesus christ yes you might feel like you are at the bottom right now you might feel like you're at the bottom but the lord told me to tell you you're coming out on top praise god you are an overcomer declare i am a conqueror i'm an overcomer by by the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen. In the face of uncertainty. People and things just dying around you. Disappearing from around you. But you made a concerted decision. Yes sir. You made a choice. That you will not allow your situation to break you. You will not allow your circumstances to bring you under. My God Almighty. Why? Because you're a fighter. Because you're a fighter. Somehow, in the midst of the struggles, in the midst, ladies and gentlemen, of the problems that you're facing on either side, hallelujah, you find deep down in your belly, you muster, as it were, the courage you muster the courage, hallelujah, uh, 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 with sheer fortitude, same word as courage, to, uh, resiliency, hallelujah, amen. The, the word resiliency means the, the capacity to recover quickly from, it, from difficulties. You have resiliency. Although you have lost some stuff, but you did not stay in mourning. You did not stay there, hallelujah, pining after what you have lost. You develop resiliency. Like elasticity. You able to stretch and bounce back. Praise God. They pull you back, but you bounce back. Yeah, yes, man. Yeah, yeah. You see, uh, how your Teflon, you got pulled. You got pulled, but somehow, amen, you did not break. Unbroken. I am speaking to some folks this evening who are unbroken. Y yes, you may feel trodden down on the inside, but you still uh, have that re 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 reserve of courage inside of you. You're still telling yourself, I'm going to make it. You're still telling yourself, I'm coming out of this. I don't know how, how but somehow I'm coming out of this. You, you, you're telling yourself, this is not the end of me. This cannot be the end of me. I will not die in this situation. I will not die in my circumstances. I will not die in this 
problems that I'm going through. I will not allow it to take me out. I'm not going to let cancer kill me. Come on. I'm not going to let sugar diabetes kill me. I'm not going to allow high blood pressure to kill me. No, sir. I am coming out. I don't know how. So there is no cure. But I believe in the miracle working power of Jesus Christ. Somehow, something inside of you telling you to go on. Hallelujah. Yes, that's what the songman said. Something down inside of me telling me to go on. What could that be? It's the Holy Ghost power. It on the inside that is tugging you along, pushing you along. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Press on. Come on. Hang on in there. Come on. Don't give up. Come on. Don't give in. You can feel. You can feel while while you're under strain. While uh, uh, um, the, the pressure is taking its toll and you feel hallelujah the strain and, uh, uh, on your body. But something Oh, some way, something inside of you telling you, I can't quit now. I can't quit. I can't quit. I'm not a quitter. I am not a quitter. I can't give in. I can't give up. I, 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 God, I come against the voices that are speaking to me. I come against the voices. All I want to hear in this hour is the voice of the Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Declare, I am shaken, but I am unbroken. Come on now, yes? Because you're human, and human do get shaken. But it doesn't mean that because you're shaken, <laughs> mean that you're broken. A positive attitude is coming to your life. A positive attitude is coming to your life. Hallelujah. God is getting ready to lift you from the bottom. Straight to the top. Come on. I feel the anointing of a lifter. Hallelujah. I said, I feel the anointing of the lifter. <laughs> How it, like it just zooping on me. And I feel a lifting in the name of Jesus. There's a lifting in my spirit. God told me to tell you. He's taking you from sickness. Yes, sir. He's delivering you from sickness to health. The anointing of the lifter. From poverty to wealth. In the name of Jesus. He, you, come on. He's lifting you from the tail to be the head. Oh, yes. You shall be the head only and not the tail oh god almighty what do you need to do now you need to understand that god will bless you or is blessing you in the reverse order i'm speaking to fighters this evening i'm speaking to fighters this evening i'm speaking to people that are unbroken yes sir y yes sir. you've been shaken but you are unbroken oh god almighty god told me to tell you that all you need to do is to keep on believing him Believe. Just keep on believing God. Keep on believing God. He's going to bless you in the reverse order. From the book of Genesis, chapter 12, and I'll look at verse 4. Genesis 12, verse 4, please. It says here, so Abraham, so Abraham, not Abraham yet. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to him. And Lot with him. And Lot went with him rather. And Abraham was, watch this, 75 years old. I put emphasis on the 75 because I want you to bear that in your mind. When I'm, when, when, because my, my topic is the reverse order. Amen. God is positioning you to bless you in the reverse order. So you need to understand what's going on. Abraham was 75 years old. Please make a note of that. When he departed from Haran, the land of the Chaldeans, or the Chaldeans. Ladies and gentlemen, let me repeat. Abraham was what? 75 years old when he started his pilgrimage. The word pilgrimage simply means a journey. Pil pilgrimage means a trip or a tour. It speaks of transformation. Pilgrimage speaks of a higher experience. Abraham was 75 years old when God released him into a new experience. 
When God says, I'm taking you out of the mundane. I'm taking you out of the regular. I'm taking you away from some old folks. Because you have some people around you that you need to get away from. I'm taking you away from the familiar. And I'm taking you into a brand new experience. When? At 75 years old. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Abraham's, uh, our Abraham's pil pilgrimage started when he was 75 years old. God began the transformation. You are not too old to be transformed. The word of God declares, be ye therefore not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Meaning to say, it doesn't matter what age you are, your mind can be renewed. Hear it. Your mind can be renewed renewed watch the word of god tonight it's not only just your mind can be renewed but also your ears your days listen to this word this evening can be renewed according to the word of god hallelujah abraham again was 75 meaning you are not out of time i don't care what age you are you are not out of time, I bind that spirit that is telling you that time is running out. Yeah. For those of you that are believing that lie from the devil, time is, time is running out for what? For your agenda. But never for God's purpose. Time can never run out when God have his purpose on your life. Amen. Even if you get to 90 years old, like Sarah, and 99, like Abraham, as long as there's a purpose on your life, that purpose has to come to pass in your life. So I'm asking you to stop using that sentiment that time is running out. On your clock, time is running out, but on God's hallelujah agenda, oh God Almighty, it's only the beginning. God said, "I come on, you haven't even gotten started yet. At 75, Abraham began a new experience. May I say this to someone this evening? You are about to venture into new experiences. You are about to venture into new experiences. Some of you, even the job that you're doing right now, God is about to change that and, 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 and release you into something different. Transformation. It's not demotion. It's promotion. I decree and declare. Hallelujah. When God uh, uh, told Abraham to leave Haran, it was not uh, uh, demotion. It was for promotion. Abraham did not know where he was going. He was just following a word. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you that if you're willing to follow God's word this evening, all you got to do is do like, say like the song man, where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me. The Bible declares that the steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. Come on. Let God have some pleasures in your ways. Let God take pleasure in in your ways listen to the word of god you might be tired but let me tell you something life is not a sprint life is not a sprint life is a marathon life is a marathon come on ladies and gentlemen it's a what a marathon you might get tired but you cannot afford to get burnt out oh god i speak to every burnt out christians right now i speak to you that feel burnt out burnt out doing what burnt out doing what you feel burnt out you feel discouraged you feel perplexed for what who were you serving what were you doing your own business your own job why are you so tired why are you so tired why do why, why is it that you have no energy why is there no zest inside of you? Every day you are tired. I come against a spirit, that lethargic spirit. Amen. You see, you're tired only to do the things of God. But when it comes to do your own things, sick and all, pain and all, 
You're dying with pain all over your body. But you will get up and you will jog that old body and you will throw it into that work, into that job. Yes, sir, because why? You are getting a reward at the end of your job, which is money. But the Lord God reward, he said, I will give you eternal life. I will give you a crown of righteousness. I'll give you a crown of life. Yes, sir. You see, the reward of this life will pass. It will pass. You will, you will work the money, get the money, buy some food, eat it, and put it in the toilet. But let me tell you something. When God rewards you, hallelujah, it's for eternal. It's eternity. Come on. He gives you life and give you life more abundantly. Stay with me here. Life is not a sprint. Life is a marathon. Stop trying to convince yourself that you are running out of time. You have no power to determine your days. You don't know how long you're going to live. Amen. So while you can, do what you can. While you can. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. There are too many miles left on your uh, uh, drive train. There are too many miles Hallelujah. You got many, 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 many more miles on that powertrain. A drivetrain and a vehicle and powertrain are two different things. According to Wikipedia, wikipedia.org, it says here, the drivetrain of a motor vehicle is a group of components that deliver power to the driving wheels. That's drivetrain, axle, and all of those kind of things. Uh, uh, transmission. This includes the engine or the, uh, or the, or the motor uh, uh, that generates power. In contrast, it says now, the powertrain, the powertrain of a vehicle is considered to include both the engine or motor and drivetrain. So there is powertrain and then there is drivetrain. So you have your both, you have lots of mileage left on you, on your powertrain and on your drivetrain. Praise God. Meaning that your age doesn't determine how many more years you, you have left to live. Your age does not determine how many more years you have left to live. God can choose to raise you up, hallelujah, in the reverse order. Meaning that God can choose to raise you up when you get mature. Not when you are young and immature, acting foolish. Listen to this promise that the Lord uh, made when, uh, in the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2 verse 25, King James Version. Joel chapter 2 verse 25 from the King James Version. He says here, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worms, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Hmm. I look at that verse and it's a very interesting verse. Because the question is, why after losing everything, why after everything got eaten up, God did not promise to restore their field. God did not promise to restore their livestock. God did not promise to restore their money or other possessions. Instead, listen to what God says. Let's read the verse again. Joel 2.25 And I will restore to you underline it the ears I will restore to you the ears not the money not the crops not the livestock I will restore I will restore to you <laughs> the ears Oh glory be to God Wow. Wow. 
What can the ears, Pastor? The ears that the locust has eaten. The canker worms. The palmer worms. The caterpillars. The, the, the locusts are whatever kind of worms that God sent among you. Did you see what just happened there? God says, I will restore your ears. Meaning, he will restore length of days, length of years, and long life. Length of days, length of years, and long life. Watch this. Hallelujah. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Very important. Proverbs 3, verse 2 says, My son, do not forget my law. Let your heart keep my commands. Verse 2 said, For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. God can lengthen your days. Watch this. Hallelujah. One more. Proverbs, Psalms 91 verse 16. Psalms 91 verse 16 it says, With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Come on here now. Amen. Hallelujah. When God bless you in the reverse order, when God bless you in the reverse order, he will make certain that he blessed you with length of days. He will give you time, more years on your life. If you are 75, God will give you more years on your life to make sure that when he blessed you in the, in the reverse order, that you have more ears to enjoy the blessing of the Lord. You shall not get blessed today and die tomorrow. Genesis 47 verse 28. Genesis 47 verse 28. Please, let's, let's go there. The Bible says here, And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. Watch this. Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the length of Jacob's life was 107 47 years. 147 years. After God brought Jacob into prosperity. After God brought Jacob into a fertile land. God gave him 17 years to enjoy it. I'm telling you that when God place you in your new house, you shall not live six months in there and die. When God bless you with your millions, you shall not only uh, um, be able to spend a few thousand and then you expired. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will live long enough, uh, hallelujah, to bask in your wealth, to enjoy the fruit of your labor, the fruit of God's blessing upon your life. May somebody praise the Lord today. Say with long life, he will satisfy me. Come on, declare. With long life, God will satisfy satisfied me. Hallelujah. With long life. Oh, glory be to God. Watch this. Now, now, now. when Abraham left the land of Ur, of the Chaldeans, he was 75 years old. Abraham lived and died according to Genesis 28. Genesis 28, 7 and 8. Read it now. Let's go there. Genesis 28, 7 and 8. New King James Version. New King James Version. Listen to the Bible. The days of Abraham's life were 175 years. Watch this. When did he step out of Haran? He was 75 years old. <laughs> Watch this. He was what? 75 years old. Listen to this. Abraham lived when God brought him into a new experience. When God uh, began the transformation in Abram's life, he was 75 years old. But listen what took place. Because God said, I will bless you in the reverse order. And not because you're older, meaning that you're going to die sooner. And, and, and not being able to enjoy the blessing of the Lord. Listen, church. Watch this. 
Then the Bible said, after Abram uh, 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 lived 175 years, then Abram breathed his last breath, and he died at a good old age. An old man who was satisfied with life. He was what? And he was gathered to his people who had preceded him in, in death. Let me ask you a question. What are you praying for? What are you really praying for? Ladies and gentlemen, if you would notice in the church today, most people are praying for money. Most people are praying for houses. Most people are praying for cars, lands, don't have time, other and other things. But listen to what God says. He gave us a hint. Because, you see, you can have all those things. You can accumulate all those stuff. You don't have no health. You don't live long enough to enjoy it. My God, my God, my God. The word of God says in Joel 2.25, you should ask God to restore your ears. Lady, gentlemen, the ears, those ears that you wasted. Oh God, if I could roll back the hands of time, we'll see that, that it is possible. You know that song? If I could roll back time. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It is possible. You, you didn't know? Stay with me. <laughs> Stay with me. You can get time rolled back. You can get, listen to what the Lord said in Joel 2.25. I will restore, not your money. I will restore the years. That means every year that you have lost. If you were supposed to live 40 years. <laughs> and you have wasted 20 when you come to God, you can ask God to restore to you the 20 wasted years that you were drinking rum, gambling, doing all kinds of stuff, womanizing, running all over the place, not serving God. When you come into the understanding of who you are and who God is, you can go to God and say, Lord, restore the ears that the canker worms, the crawling worms, the caterpillars, and the locusts have eaten up. And if you were supposed to live 40 years, God had 20 more years to your days, which now you have 20 years that is bought back. It's called restoration of the years. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. And I, said God, will restore. So while you're praying for money, you might get the money, but not live long enough to enjoy it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. While you're praying for the big house, you might get the big house, but you can't enjoy it. Because you are sick. My God. Why? <laughs> While you are praying for the car. You might get that car. And meet in an accident and die. Mm. In that same car. That you were praying for. That you were so. <laughs> you know. You gave up God. To go chasing after that car. And that same vehicle. Is your death trap. But if you were asking God to restore those wasted years, whether it was your fault or not, Joel 2, 25 said, And I will restore the years, not your money. You have lost some money, but God said, Don't set your mind on that. It's not money that you really need. You need long life. You need life. Everybody's afraid to die. Although Paul said, for me to live, it's gain. And, uh, you, you, you know that. Yeah, please. It's Christ. To die is gain. Uh, you, you know that. But ain't nobody want to die. 
So the Lord says, I will give you long life. I will restore. Meaning, there are some folks, including me, that believe that I have a few wasted years under my belt. And now that I understand the word of God, I can go before the Almighty God and I can say, God, those few years that I can't even give account for because I don't even know how I spent them. There is no evidence of anything that I've accomplished from this age to that age. They were just wasted. The Lord said, okay, since you're not asking me for money, for houses, for land, I'm going to give you long life. And along with long life, I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. I'm going to give you something to enjoy long life with. You will not have long life and live poverty stricken. <laughs> In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And that is right and there's pleasure forevermore. If God is going to give you long life, he is not going to let you have long life living like a pauper. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 1 through 9. It's a long read. Amen. It says here, In those days, Ezekiah was sick. I'm just trying to prove a point to you that you can roll back the hands of time if you know how to pray. You can ask God to give you back those days or years that have been wasted in your life. God is ready to bless you in the reverse order. God. Anointing of the fighter come upon God's people tonight. Lord God, let your people know, yes, they are shaking, but they must remain unbroken. Not one of Jesus' bones were broken. Jesus Christ, not one of his bones were broken. The Bible said they break the foot of the soldier beside him. They break the other soldier's feet. But when they came to Jesus in the middle, they realized that he was already dead. So the soldiers pierced him with the spear in his side and blood and water gushed out. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Psalm 22, that none of his bones, not one of his bones will be broken. You are shaken but you will be unbroken in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to it. In those days, as Ezekiah was sick, 2 Kings 20, 1-9, uh, and he was near death. And, 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 and Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus said the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then he turned, that is Ezekiah, his face to the wall, and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and I've done what what was good in your sight and Ezekiah wept bitterly verse 4 said and it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came to him saying return and tell Ezekiah the leader of my people thus said the Lord the God of David your father I have heard your prayer I have seen your tears surely I will heal you on the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord. And I will add, watch this here, watch verse 6. And I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the end of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. Verse 7. Then, said, uh, then Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. So they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Ezekiah now, in verse 8, said to Isaiah, What is the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up to the house of the Lord the third day? Then Isaiah said, This is a sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing which he has spoken. And shall the shadow go down 10 degree or backward 10 degree? Hallelujah. Ezekiah, let me stop reading there because of time. He said, uh-uh. I, I don't want it to go, I don't want it to go forward. I want it to go backward 10 degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, you can keep on reading on in that same chapter. What God, what Ezekiah just did was to roll back time. 
you are anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit to roll back years of your days. Amen. When you come into this realization and know that God is not done with you yet, hallelujah, and sickness wants to take you out and you are not ready to go, you can say like Paul, I'm not ready. Paul said, I'm caught betwixt two. Hallelujah. Want to die, I want to live. But Paul said, I tell death, I'm not ready yet. Hear Isaiah, Ezekiah, hallelujah, do the same thing. In 2 Kings 20, he told death, I am not ready yet. And when Isaiah came to him, he said, what is the sign that this is a sure word from God? Hallelujah. You need to ask for some kind of evidence or some kind of confirmation. He said, well, the sundial will go ahead 10 degrees. He said, no, 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 no. That's too easy. Amen. The dial is already going forward. He said, no, I want to see God roll back the hands of time. Come on, somebody. I said, God is rolling back back the hands of time. Your youth is coming back. Amen. Your vigor is coming back. Hey, your, your, your joy is coming back. Your strength is coming back. What has gone down is coming up. What has dried up, hallelujah, is coming to life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, declare it's coming back. It's always coming back, Pastor Taylor. Because why? God says I am restoring whatever was wasted in your life. I speak to those who have suffered waste. I speak to those who know that yes God I've wasted some years I've wasted some precious years but can I bring you good news thus said the Lord it's not over thus said the Lord whatever you have lost can be restored your ears can be restored I will restore them to you said God the ears and the palmer worms the ears and the canker worms the ears and the caterpillars and the locusts of eaten up i will restore to you yes god can bless you in the reverse he can roll back that's the reverse roll back that's the reverse he rolled back he said to joel i will reverse that's the same word called restoration mm -hmm. restoration god is reversing misfortune from off your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me do this one more and I close. Don't know if I can get through it. There's so much in this reverse order. So much. <laughs> From the book of Genesis 48. Genesis 48 verse 9 through 20. Very, very classic. I... Listen to this. Let's read from verse 9. Pick it up from verse 9. Joseph said to his father, They are my son because Jacob has to see Joseph's two sons that he had in Egypt. And Joseph brought his two sons to, to Ephraim and Manasseh to, to his father. And he asked, Who are these? Joseph said in verse 9, they are my sons whom God has given me in this place. And he said, please bring them to me and I will bless them. The Bible says in verse 10, Now the eyes of Israel were dim with age, so that he could not see. Then Joseph brought them near him and kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had thought to see your face. But in fact, God has also shown me your offspring. So verse 12, Joseph brought them from beside his knees and bow down with his face to the earth as reference to his father. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim with his right hand towards Israel's left hand and Manasseh with his left hand towards Israel's right hand. Watch, watch what's going on here. And brought them near to him. Verse 14 says, then Israel stretched out his right hand. Israel crossed his hand. Watch this. Place his left hand on Manasseh's head. Guiding his hand low, knowingly from Manasseh was the what? 
first born. Watch this. Watch it. Let, let, let me read it again. Joseph took them both in verse 13 with his right hand towards Israel left hand. He placed the older, the young, the younger one at Jacob's left hand. And he put the older one at Jacob's right hand. Watch this. Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hand knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, <laughs> Hallelujah. He said to Joseph, uh, 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 he said, God before whom my father Abraham and Isaac walk, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. Let my name be named among them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Watch verse 17. Now when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. This is Joseph, eh? Joseph who, he and his father never had a disagreement. But watch when God is, a, is about to change up the order. When God is about to change up the order and do things... <laughs> In an unorthodox way, it's going to get a lot of people hangry. When people think that things are supposed to go a certain way, and God chose to switch, God chose, oh bless God, to make a different move. And instead of God doing it the regular way, God does it in the reverse. Watch what happened. A boy who was so honorable to his father. Let me tell you something. You can trigger off people who doesn't even understand the ways of God. And that is the reason why you got to be careful that, that you don't allow some people to get to your head. Because they just don't understand the things of God. Watch this. Joseph. When Joseph saw, verse 17, this is, I'm closing. When Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. So he took all of his fathers and you rude. Out of order. He took all of his fathers and to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, not so my father, for this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused. And said, I know, my son, I know. He also, watch this. This is the reverse order. He also shall become a people. And he also shall be great. But, my, yeah, 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 yeah. but, truly, hey, hey, his younger brother shall be greater than he. And his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. I got to close because of time. Hallelujah. Got to close. <laughs> I have so much more scriptures that I want to <laughs> tell you. What just took place there, the same thing happened in Genesis 25. We're, we're in, I th yeah, I think so. We're, we're in uh, 25 uh, and verse 20 through 23. We're in um, um, Rebecca was pregnant, amen, and uh, Re Re Rebecca was barren, couldn't have no babies, and Isaac went to the Lord and asked the Lord, God, what is happening? What's going on? This is, this is found in Genesis chapter 23, 25 rather, and, and from verse 20. Uh, Isaac asked the Lord, God, what is happening? Why is it that my wife can't get pregnant? So his wife, God heard his prayer. In verse 21, someplace there. And, and Rebecca conceived. And she conceived twins. But the children began to struggle in Rebecca's womb, in her belly. And, 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 and so she went to the Lord and said, God, what is happening 
It's why is these ki kids kicking and, and fighting in my stomach like this? Why is it this way? And the Lord told Rebecca, two nations are inside of you. But the younger one shall rule the holder. The reverse order. I'm going to do it in the reverse. Ladies and gentlemen, just as you saw, we just read, read it in Genesis chapter 48. Hallelujah. That God done it in the reverse for Manasseh and Ephraim. And Joseph got angry with his father. The only time that Joseph ever disagreed with his father when, was when it comes to a spiritual matter that Joseph has no insight in spiritual matters. You got to be careful that you don't go up against a man of God who is operating under the auspices of the Holy Spirit and you come with your little intellect, you come with your little knowledge to say this is the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> The ways of God are past finding out. Joseph recognized that he violates. Because why? He expected the holder to be the ruler. Not understanding his own position. How far-fetched we can be at times. Joseph himself, who was the younger brother, only next to him is Benjamin. And Joseph had a dream that he as a younger one was going to rule the older ones. Now that he, he have children and God was about to do the same thing with his own children only that this time it was not in the form of a dream. It was in the form of a prophecy. A word. Hallelujah. That was spoken by his father father upon his sons joseph who should have understood that this is how god worked he take the the the, the 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 least of things and make it the greatest that that's who he was that's who joseph is joseph was the least and yet he became the greatest and god said now here is manasseh and here is ephraim i'm taking the younger just like you joseph and I'm going to make him the head of the rest. And Joseph was displeased. Wow. He had problems when his brothers dis were displeased with him. And here comes Joseph and play back the same game. How easily we forget. How quickly we forget where we are coming from. It's kind of funny that when some people reach to a certain place in life, they have forgotten their journey to stardom. They have forgotten what and who they had to overcome. And they overcame because of the grace of God. And now that God wants to promote someone who found themselves in their position when they were down there, they want to be the blocker. Joseph wants to be the blocker of promotion. When his own brothers tried to block him. Now he wants to block his own sons. <laughs> Something is wrong with this picture. But you can't stop God from doing business in the reverse order. Just like how from Jacob to, to his wife, Rachel, and all of the other 11 siblings, could not stop Joseph from getting to where God said he would be. His blessing in the reverse order. There was, there was uh, uh, 10 other brothers that were older than J Joseph. Yet God blessed from the reverse. The other brother, Ephraim and Manasseh, was older. But God said, I'm going to use the younger one. J Jacob, uh, Isaac, uh, 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 Jacob and, and Esau. And God said, I am going to use Jacob. If, but if you look at the whole picture, this Jacob understood, the same Jacob that was blessing Manasseh and Ephraim, understood that that was the story of his life. His brother Esau was older than him, 
yet God raised up Israel, who is Jacob, to become the prince of the nations. Tonight, as I close, I'm only sorry I don't have more time to share with you. God told me to tell you, you're a fighter. He's blessing you in the reverse order. And that what you need to pray for most of all starting now is not so much for money. Money will come. Seek ye first. Money will come. Houses will come. But if you get the house, the money, the cars, and you don't have long life, somebody else is going to come and marry to your pretty wife. Somebody else is going to come and inherit your husband's millions that he died left. Because the idiot, he only prayed for the money, but he did not ask God to give him long life to enjoy it. So he stored up his goods and another person come in to enjoy it. May God bless you richly tonight. I'm asking you to please remember to subscribe, to like, and to share this broadcast. And don't forget to hit the notification button or bell, whichever one it is. Please help me to build this viewership. I'm asking you out there. And I'm going to ask them to put up a sign. Please help us to build this online viewing. I'm going to ask them to write that. And next time they have it flashing on the line that I don't have to keep on repeating this. Please help us to build this online viewership. And I'm going to ask them to write it big. Not these little fine things that you hardly can read. Amen? They're putting up some little stuff that you can't read. I'm asking you, hallelujah, to help us build our online viewership. And the way that you do it is to subscribe, number one, is to like, is to share. You understand what I'm saying to you? Amen? And to also hit the notification bell or button. May God bless you. I was, so, I was so pleased with seeing the folks in church today. My heart is indicting a good mother. I want to thank um, all the people that labor so hard, amen, to, to, to making it happen. God bless you. God bless you. And I pray that whatever embarrassment and shame that the devil is seeking to bring, it shall not stand and it shall not come to pass. I thank you for your hard labor. I thank you for your dedication for the people that are working behind the scenes to make this broadcast and not only this broadcast, to make church a safe environment. Hallelujah. I'm asking my uh, viewing audience to continue praying for us that no embarrassment and no shame will come nigh us. May God bless you and have yourselves a wonderful week. I will see you on Wednesday on our live broadcast. Shalom. God is with you. Bye now.